Welcome to our Museum of the Heroes of Independence in Africa. This is Jomo Kenyatta, the leader of independence in Kenya after heading the Kenyan African Union, or the KAU, an organization Kenyan Africans use to try to gain political rights through nonviolent, peaceful approaches. After Kenya gained its independence in 1963, Jomo Kenyatta even became the very first president. Kenya grew economically and had much fewer revolts after he became president. He wasn't ever even voted out of office. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. You haven't even said anything about how he became a dictator. <gasps> That's right. After he became president, Jomo Kenyatta's supposedly free elections were not free at all. He banned the other political party, which was his opposing party, from even voting. That's how he held on to power for his entire life. Well, but... He even amended the Kenyan constitution to give himself more power than he already had. Um, let's move on, shall we? This is Patrice Lumumba, the leader of an independence group called Movement National Congolais, or the MNC, and the very first democratically elected prime minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He even went to important conferences with another independence leader in this museum, Kwame Nkrumah. Hold up. You never said what happened to the Democratic Republic of Congo after he became president. Some of Patrice Lamumba's decisions led almost the entire country into rebellion. Riots broke out everywhere and dozens of people were killed. Well, yes, but... He was only in office for 12 days before Belgium, the U.S., and the U.N. ousted him out of office and executed him by firing squad. Oh, uh, this, this next portrait looks uh, quite interesting. <laughs> This is Kwame Nkrumah, the leader of an independence group called the United Gold Coast Convention, or the UGCC, and both the first president and the first prime minister of Ghana. He promoted women's suffrage, helped unite all the Gold Coast countries, learned to govern, and got the United Kingdom to grant his nation complete independence. Okay, wait up. You haven't said anything about how he was ousted out of office. That's right. Kwame Nkrumah made some bad decisions while he was in office, such as spending all of Ghana's funds on capital goods. He was ousted out of office in 1966 and had to flee to Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Well, you see... He was driven a bit insane by his fear of being abducted and assassinated. Uh, let's move on to the next independence leader. <laughs> This is Robert Mugabe, part of many independence parties in Rhodesia, such as the ZAPU, the Zimbabwe African People's Union, and he even became president of the ZANU, the Zimbabwe African National Union. After Rhodesia gained independence as Zimbabwe in 1980, Robert Mugabe became prime minister. He was so good that he was re-elected over and over again. He's still the president today. Whoa, 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 whoa. You haven't even mentioned that he became a dictator. Uh-huh. That's the real reason he's continued to hold on to power for so long. He has rigged several elections and has barely allowed the other party to participate in the government at all. Well, maybe, but you see... Robert Mugabe was racist towards whites. He has referred to other groups of people as worse than dogs or pigs. He even forced Zimbabwe into the Second Congo War despite its struggling economy. Okay, that's enough now. Uh, let's, let's move on. <laughs> this is Paul Kruger, the Commandment General of the South African Republic and the fifth president of South Africa. When the Boers fought against British colonization, he was the face of it all. During the First Boer War, Kruger played a very crucial role in negotiations with the British, and the Boers came out of that war victorious. Okay, wait up now. You never said anything about what an awful person he was. Paul Kruger was extremely racist. He might have been a leader to the Boers, but he was a downright monster to the black natives. Well, you see... He fled during the Second Boer War to Mozambique. He left his wife to die in South Africa. I mean, like, who does that? Uh, hmm, well, let's move along to the next hero, why don't we? This is Ahmed Sekou Touré, the very first president of Guinea. He was the leader of the Guinean National Party, went to conferences in France to try to get the French to free their African colonies, and was elected into office in 1958. He remained president until he died in 1984. Everybody must have loved him.
OMG, do we really have to go through this again? He was a dictator just like practically everyone else in this museum. That's how he held on to power for so long. He banned the opposing political party from voting. He put people who opposed him in prison or exiled them from Guinea. Well, but... The Guinean government didn't offer its citizens economic opportunities or democratic rights under his rule. Oh, we still have uh, one last exhibit uh, right this way. Here, I'll give you a short recap of all our heroes. Jomo Kenyatta, independence leader and president of Kenya. Also a dictator. <coughs> Patrice Lumumba, independence leader and prime minister for the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Executed by firing squad. <laughs> you didn't mean to say that, I'm sure. <laughs> Kwame Nkrumah, independence leader and president of Ghana. Ousted out of office and driven insane. <laughs> Robert Mugabe, independence leader and prime minister of Rhodesia, also known as Zimbabwe. Also known as dictator. Um, Paul Kruger, commandment general and fifth president of South Africa. Also an extremely racist monster. <coughs> Ahmed Sekou Toure, independence leader and president of Guinea. Another dictator. Um, Well, um, anyways, thanks for stopping by at our Heroes of Independence in Africa Museum. Uh, hope to see you soon. Don't come back. This person's a fake. Well, uh, these are the sources that we use to complete this PowerPoint. Thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely rest of the day.